Luke, Tom, and Nate here with the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel. And today, we're catching, cleaning, and cooking carp. Well, here we are in the spot we're going to fish. Typically, I'd cast my line right here. I caught a 14 pound mirror carp right where I'm standing. Um, but we've lost about four feet of water and so it's really changed the, the dynamics of this place. But uh, it's opened up a lot of shore access. So we, we got a lot easier job fishing from shore today. So we're gonna go cast our rods out, get all set up, and then I'm gonna walk you through all my gear and everything and hopefully we'll catch ourselves a carp. And we're gonna cook it up. Bye bye. Yeah, bet they're right. On. Not far away. Don't me, I don't need to go. I've got these bite alarms. They're electronic bite indicators. They're absolutely fabulous. On my spinning rods, I have European method leads. They're designed to grip what's called pack baits. They're these doughy baits that you pack onto your lead. And I've got about four inches of leader and a number six hook with a piece of fake corn on a hair rig. And we're gonna tuck that in there. I have an Ugly Stick GX2 medium power rod and a Ming Yang MC600 reel. And instead of a method lead, I have one of these one ounce sand claw leads from Cabela's. They grip pack bait really well. I'm gonna add a little bit of this Procure Sweet Corn Super Gel to the fake corn. It's really sticky stuff. It gives a little extra flavor to the fake corn. I've had this Ming Yang 600 for two years now, and it started just giving me all sorts of trouble. It'll kind of start to reel and then it stops. It's just totally jacked up. This is the bait I'm using. It's Panko with sweet corn and strawberry jello. And you mix it all up and it makes this spongy pack bait that you can mold into a, a ball and pack around your lead. You use this for years, it is so effective. If you wanna see how to make this, I'll put a link in the video description. Nathan, what are you doing? <laughs> Don't, Nathan, stop that, oh! Nathan, what happened? I I put it was so weird. I was holding my own tongue. Well, we had a little incident and I had to take Tommy and Nathan home. I have told Nathan over and over again, do not eat any plants without my permission. So Nathan, being a lawyer's son, went and found this plant and decided it would be a good idea to chew it. Not eat it, chew it. <laughs> turns out that this is a plant called aroarum. It's a native plant here in Virginia and it contains a toxin which is kind of like poison ivy for your mouth and throat. It's not deadly poison, it's just really uncomfortable. So uh, after about an hour he calmed down and he's okay now but uh, yeah, yeah, don't eat plants without talking to someone who really knows what they're doing. There we go, channel catfish. Man, they love this bait. Catch tons of channel cats when I'm carp fishing. There he goes. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Woo there we go. That's why you use a hair rig. Puts that bait right in the bottom lip. Great hook set. Right through the chin. Perfect. So there you go, pretty little carp, below average size for this water. Perfect little eater, plenty of meat on this guy. Got this big mesh bag here. We're gonna put the carp inside. You can buy laundry bags at Walmart for a couple dollars that do the same thing, but this one's specially designed for carp fishing. There we go, got my keep net in the water. And uh, the other end of the string, I'm gonna tie to a stick over here. Keep them from swimming away on me. There we go. 
Well, there we go, another beautiful common carp. This one's a little bigger. I'm gonna go ahead and let him go because I really don't need that much carp meat. One carp will do my family quite nice. All right, there we go. Whoa, those carp are a lot of fun. Both fish were a little bit below average for this water, but man, they fight good. They just put on huge runs. And you can see how it is. The sun is set and the action is picking up. I've only got a few more minutes here before I need to pack it in and go home. But, uh, whoop, there's another fish. Let's go catch another one. Well, it's getting too late to deal with this carp tonight. So I'm gonna leave them in the carp sack overnight. When I get home from work tomorrow, I'm gonna show you how to clean and cook carp. There you go guys, a really great example of a wild common carp here in the United States. But a lot of people get these confused with wild buffalo or suckers, which are both native fish. The big way to tell the difference between common carp and other types of fish that are not carp is right here on the chin. See these little barbels? Okay, right here and here. Common carp have those, buffalo do not. Sucker fish do not. Additionally, look at the pupil. You have a golden eye with a black pupil. Buffalo have a black on black soulless looking eye. A lot of people think that common carp are an invasive species. Uh, here in North America, in most places, they are not an invasive species. They're not a native species, but they're what we call a naturalized species. So when you take a non-native species and you introduce it, it's invasive. But once it kind of reaches an equilibrium with the environment, then it becomes naturalized. Because the common carp have been here for almost 200 years, they've reached an equilibrium with their environment. And on the Virginia Department of Fish and Game website, these are listed as a naturalized species. But a lot of people get these confused with the very invasive Asian carp, the silver carp and big head carp, or the black carp, um, or even grass carp. These are completely different animals, okay? They're only vaguely related to those fish. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you how to clean a common carp. A lot of people will tell you that they have a lot of bones. The truth is they don't have that much more bones than any other fish. The problem is the bones break and leave chunks in the meat if you try to remove the bones before cooking them. And so what I'm gonna do is fillet it just like you would a normal round fish. And then after cooking, we're gonna show you how to remove all the bones so it's quite easy. All right, I've got two knives I'm gonna use. I've got my Japanese kitchen knife, which I bought in Kyoto last year, and I've got a Dexter Russell fillet knife. I'm gonna start by descaling this carp. I'm just using the back side of the knife. I don't wanna dull my knife. Now I'm just gonna flay this like you would any round fish. Carp have massive rib bones. And in some places, people like to actually eat the ribs like you would beef ribs or barbecue ribs. There we go. Pretty, pretty carp fillet. If you flay the fish right after you kill it, like I did, you don't need to bleed the fish. The blood just washes off really easy. If you're not gonna be able to do that, bleed the fish before you kill it, and uh, that'll reduce the amount of blood in the fillet. All right, one down. So I'm curious to see what's in this guy's stomach. Let's, let's see. Here you go, this is the carp row. So this was a spawning female. Um, in the fall here in Virginia, we get a second spawn. The carp spawn in the springtime and in the fall. And that's pretty common in warmer climates. Uh, you'll get double spawns. Here's some more eggs. Holy mackerel, look at all those eggs. Here's essentially the stomach and there's nothing in it. Here's all the guts inside the carp and this is just solid eggs. Carp reproduce very aggressively, and this is part of the reason 
why they're more important to the environment than people give them credit. Here in this lake, the carp aren't overrunning the place. There's a very well-balanced, stable population of carp, and there has been for a very long time. So if all these carp are producing all of these tons and tons of eggs, where are all the baby carp? The answer is simple. The baby carp are inside the bellies of the channel catfish and the flatheads and the largemouth bass and the crappie. And carp fry are a major source of food in this lake. Um, it's a major forage for our predatory game fish. Carp play an important role in the ecosystem just like every other fish. And if you take away the carp, you're gonna take away a massive food source for the bass and the catfish and all these other fish. Those of you who follow my channel might remember that I did a carp fishing catch and cook video a little while ago, but I had a friend from Bangladesh come over and show me a Bangladeshi carp curry recipe that was frankly just amazing. It was so delicious. But this time I wanna try something a little different. I wanna make something that's a little bit more familiar to my North American audience. I'm gonna go and build a fire cook these carp over an open flame and try a recipe that might be something you do at home. Got all the wood ready, time to start the fire. I'm gonna show you a trick on how to start a fire without using any matches. I've got some coarse sea salt here. Just a little bit of black pepper. I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna sprinkle the skin side with some fine iodized salt. I wanna make sure this spot right here is about 375 degrees or 400 degrees. And the way you test that is you hold your hand over it. One, two, three. And if you can hold it over for the slow count of three, that's about 375. So the temperature is just perfect right now. So we're gonna go ahead and put the basket just like that. You can cook this recipe at home simply by putting the fillets on a cooking sheet and broiling it at about 375 degrees. All right, I'm gonna make a really funky salsa type mix to go on our fish. Got some chives. So on the carp fillets, the skin side, it's a little bit blackened, that's perfect. Now we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna take a little coals out of there and cook it at a little bit lower heat. This is a kumquat, like a little tiny orange that you can eat the peel. Absolutely wonderful, delicious little fruit. All right, got some ginger puree. I'm gonna put that in there. You know, you can make this mixture as sweet or as sour as you want. If it's a little bit too sour, just go and add a little sugar to it. If it gets a little too dry, add a splash of water just to wetten it back up. Let's check the fish. Oh, look at that. Nice and brown, got drippings there. That looks perfect. You got the sweet orange kumquats, the red onions, the garlic, the lime, the butter, the ginger, this really complex sweet and sour salsa or relish or whatever you want to call it, but it's delicious. 
Nathan, Tommy, thanks for joining me, guys. You want to eat some carp? Yeah. Sure. There we go. Take a lime here. Now remember I told you that there's these Y bones right up in here. These bones are all in a line. So if you go down the fillet, without destroying the fillet too much, you can, you can pick them out. You can kind of know where they're going to be. Well, this is why people say carp have a lot of bones. This is all the bones out of the two fillets, and these are all Y bones. They call them Y bones because as you can see, they're kind of shaped like a Y. But luckily, all of the bones are laying on their side right along this strip. So if you just go down the side of the fillet and pick them out, then you can take out all the bones. And if you get a little bit of talent to it too, you can take them out without destroying the fillet as much as I, I did. Hey look, we got the rest of the family. Hi Jacob, hi mom. Hi. You Daddy. guys ready for some carp tacos? Sure. It Ooh. smells good. Oh. You gotta have some cilantro. Cilantro. Gotta warm up our tortillas here. Just put them right down on these hot rocks. And let's check on our corn. Let's make up some carp tacos here. There we go, a carp taco on a warm tortilla, some artisan lettuce, kumquat salsa, and a little cilantro. Okay, a lot of cilantro. Let's fold that up. Mmm. There we go, carp taco. Carp tastes a lot like other white meat fish. It's got a little bit more bones. But fresh carp like this, surrounded by good ingredients, it is really good. It's just salt and pepper and cooked over a campfire, and it's and it's good. And there's no bones in the flays anymore. Hey Nathan, what do you think of the carp? Um, good? Here, that, wanna that, try my taco? That, that looks good. Let me try it. Bye. You like that? I like the fish. Mama, you want to try him? I'll try. Did they bite a come Have some more. Can please have some more? That could get me another. No. So, so, Mama, what do you think? It's good. You guys like your carp tacos? Yeah, yeah it's good. <laughs> I call this a success. All three of the boys are eating it. All three. They won't even all eat spaghetti. <laughs> That is saying something. There you go, one of the most popular freshwater game fish in the world, common carp. People catch and eat these all over the world. And they're perfectly fine to eat. They're a great fish and they're loads of fun to catch. Well that taco was delicious and I am going to wash it down with a bottle of my homemade autumn olive soda pop. Woohoo! <laughs> well, thanks for watching guys. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more cooking videos, check out our other channel, the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel. If you want to see more fishing videos and tutorials, check out the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel. Don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. Thanks for watching.